Glory to God. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 We are ready. Time for the foundations class, y'all. Amen. Amen. And amen. Glory to God. Foundations class on the podcast for LUTG Radio. Amen. Don't forget, we got LUTG Radio TV too. Oh my goodness, it is so freaking cold. I just cannot tell you how cold it is other than telling you. It is so freaking cold. But we got to put on our armor of God anyway. It's going to keep us warm. Amen, amen, amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Um, I'm just trying to get the... uh, trying to get this thing on right here amen amen glory to god all right so hopefully y'all can still hear me in the uh on the radio side um but listen from the podcast that way you'll be sure to get it uh no matter what is going on amen amen um real quick let me just pray real quick. Thank you, Heavenly Father, for you alone are worthy of all the glory, the honor, the power, and the praise. Lord God, for you are our strength, our hope, our joy, our peace, our love. There it is. We thank you, Lord, for you alone are worthy. We thank you, Lord God, for being with us this day. It may seem like uh, you are not here, Lord God, but we know that you are here. Sometimes we feel lonely, but we got to rest in the fact that we know that our Heavenly Father, that our Heavenly Father is with us. We rest in that our Heavenly Father is with us. So thank you, Lord. Thank you for being ever present. Amen. Thank you, Lord God, for speaking through me today that uh, whatever I say. May be a blessing to those that are listening by spirit and by the natural. I pray that you folks that are listening by the spirit will go ahead and just click the podcast button. That's how I get paid. When you listen via the podcast, I get a couple pennies put in my account. I'm hoping for some trillions of pennies that will probably end up being a few million or something. I don't know. Uh, Oh, that's not. That's just a request of mine. That's not a prayer. But we can make it a prayer in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord God, because I've asked that before. Amen. All right, let me know you're listening. Hallelujah. All right, so uh, pull up uh, pull up your book, uh, Luke 24, 45. Uh, we're, gonna, we're putting on the armor of God. Luke 24, 45, Ephesians 6. Chapter 6, verses 10 through 17, 18 and 19. Numbers 6, 24 through 27 and Psalms 91. And this is week number 7. I'm sorry, this is the LUTG Radio Show with Kathy Brocks. I forgot I didn't say that. Again, this is Kathy. This is the LUTG Radio Show with Kathy Brocks. And we're on week number 7 for the foundation class. And But before we do that, we're going to go ahead and put on our armor God. Get dressed, amen. Gird up our loins with the word of God. Amen. So here we go. Luke 24, 45 says, Then opened he their understanding that they might understand the scriptures. Then opened he their understanding that they might understand the scriptures. Hallelujah. Woohoo. Woo, 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 woo. Uh, Ephesians chapter six, verse 10 through 17 says, finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might, put on the whole armor of God that ye may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Wherefore take unto you the whole armor armor of God that ye may be able to withstand in the evil day and having done all to stand. 
Stand therefore, having your loins girt about with truth and having on the breastplate of righteousness and your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Above all, taking the shield of faith, wherewith ye shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked and take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. Verses 18 and 19 says... Praying always with all prayer and supplication in the spirit and watching thereunto with all perseverance, perseverance and supplication for all saints and for me that utterance may be given unto me that I may open my mouth boldly to make known the mystery of the gospel. Amen. Glory to God. And then we have Numbers chapter 6, verse 24 through 27. And that says, The Lord bless thee and keep thee. The Lord make his face shine upon thee and be gracious unto thee. The Lord lift up his countenance upon thee and give thee peace. And they shall put my name upon the children of Israel and I will bless them. Amen. Glory to God. And that there is the armor. And Psalms 91 is the promise. <laughs> Woo! Psalms 91 is the promise, baby. Baby, baby, baby. I can't tell if this is me or if this is the Lord, but I'm going to just go ahead and do it just in case. Look, you don't never want to make a mistake and not do something. <sighs> and so, uh, let's see here. So, we got Psalms 91. And this is the promise of God. This is what you get. Mm. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. Shall abide on the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress. My God, in Him will I trust. Surely He shall deliver thee from the snare of the fowler and from the noisome pestilence. He shall cover thee with His feathers and under His wings shalt thou trust. His truth shall be thy shield and buckler. Thou shalt not be afraid. For the terror by night, nor for the arrow that flieth by day, nor for the pestilence that walketh in darkness, nor for the destruction that wastes at noonday. A thousand shall fall at thy side and ten thousand at thy right hand, but it shall not come nigh thee. Only with thine eyes shall thou behold and see the reward of the wicked. Because thou hast made the Lord, which is my refuge, even the most high thy habitation. There shall no evil befall thee, neither shall any plague come nigh thy dwelling. Amen. Woohoo! Health, strength, yes. For he shall give his angels charge over thee to keep thee in all thy ways. They shall bear thee up in their hands, lest thou dash thy foot against the stone. Thou shalt tread upon the lion and the adder, the young lion and the dragon, shalt thou trample under feet. Because he hath set his love upon me, therefore will I deliver him. I will set him on high, because he hath known my name. He shall call upon me, and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him and show. I will deliver him and honor him. With long life will I satisfy him and show, S-H-E-W, show him my salvation. Oh, that's what we get the blessings of the Lord. And here's another one, Isaiah 54 and 17. It says, no weapon that is formed against me shall prosper. And every tongue that shall rise against thee in judgment, thou shalt condemn. This is the heritage of the servants of the Lord and their righteousness is of me, saith the Lord. Oh, another benefit of loving God and having faith in the Lord God Almighty. Thank you, Jesus. 
We are saved by faith through Christ Jesus. Bum ba da, bum dun 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 You like giving Jesus a, a theme song. <laughs> Your mouth, what? What you say? Hey, bum, 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 bum. Amen. Glory to God. All right, y'all. We're about to pull up in uh, week number seven of the ten week uh, training course for foundations. Amen. So, the first scripture, and you'll find this on LUTGradio.com under the tab, um, the Salvation tab, under the Salvation tab. And it says, uh, 10 week uh, foundations. All right. And so, anyway. So, the first one is John chapter 10, verse 10. It says, The thief cometh not but for to steal and to kill and to destroy and to destroy. I am, meaning God, Come that they might have life and that they might have it more abundantly. And so when you when you see I am, it's in reference to Jesus. Jesus is the face of the Lord. It's like God is speaking through him. When we ask God to speak to us for the message. Lord God, give me a message. Speak to me. Open. And God's like, open up your mouth and I'm going to talk. And so when Jesus was walking this is how he talked to grown adults when he was 12, saying, no, nah, bro, you wrong. Look, this is what it really mean. He talked He talked to them because he opened up his mouth and God filled it. Whoop, whoop, whoop. <laughs> and so anyway, uh, that's number 10, right? So the thief coming, but not for to steal and to kill, but to and to destroy. I am come that they might have life and have it more abundantly. More, more abundantly. Amen. <laughs> oh, run on over to Genesis, um, Genesis 27. Pull up Genesis 27 for me real quick. <sighs> All right, so. Well, uh, Genesis uh, 27, starting off with 45, it says, until thy brother's anger anger turns away from thee. This is um, Esau and Jacob. Turns away from thee, and he forget that which thou hast done to him. Then will I send and fetch thee from thence. Why should I be deprived also of you both in one day? Because uh, not only was uh, Esau mad at his brother Jacob, but he was also upset at his mother. Because he knew Jacob couldn't do that on his own. He knew his mother had a hand up in that. And so Esau was like, Mama, why are you choosing him over me again? Why are you choosing him over me, Mama? I love you too. How come you don't love me? I love you. I love you. But see, sometimes we'll choose what is closest to us and those that we have trained up. And those that we have had an opportunity to speak into their ear. And she didn't have much of an opportunity to speak into Esau's ear because he was out in the field. Learning how to gather for the family, learning how to, you know, tend to the sheep and grow the vegetables. And, you know, he was getting all strong and sweaty. And so, um, I didn't mean to make that dirty, I apologize. <laughs> and verse 46 it says, And Rebecca said to Isaac, I am weary of my life because. Uh, of um, because of the daughters of Heth, if Jacob take a wife of the daughters of Heth, such as these, which are of the daughters of the land, what good shall my life do to me? So she was been melodramatic, baby, 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 my baby, who I bore and I labored over for nine hours. Oh, don't get with them. Don't don't get away from over there. They trifling, child. They trifling. They trifling. 
I'm telling you, baby, 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 baby. If you don't listen to mama, listen to mama now. Baby, those 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 people, they trifling. And if the mama is trifling and the daddy is trifling, you know the daughter is trifling. Don't go get no don't go get no wife from over there. Look, let mama tell you where to go get a wife from. Let mama pick her out for you. Mama can do it for you. <laughs> Remember your life is still valuable. Um thinking things when you think that your life, like, for example, if your husband, or I should say, if your man <laughs> decides to go and get another wife, why you still alive and y'all still married, that's kind of awkward. Or your son decides to go get somebody, go get a wife some someplace that you don't like. You got to still remember that you are of value. And um, that sort of thinking you know, that can be switched to your brain and to your body. you like, but yeah, but I know, I know, I know, I know you know. But, you know, you can't control everything he does. But if you would pray, God would lead him in the right way to go. And so that even though maybe all the people of that tribe may be trifling, he, God will lead him to the diamond in the rough. And so you got to get out of that pool of thinking because that pool is like dung and that and and it'll begin it's like done and so what you got to do is start thinking on the things um that you have done that the how you have raised your child up you raised them up to discern right from wrong and so what good things how have you made your child happy how how have you made others happy uh in life through all this time you've been raising him you've been raising these children so that they'll be a blessing these men so that they'll be a blessing to their wives and you know that they won't forget mama and daddy you know they'll take care of you now you know when you get older what do you think but i say don't be saying that they'll take care of you when you get older say you'll be you'll be able to take care of yourself when you get older and that they'll be a blessing to you because that's what you really want you want them to be a blessing to you and you want to be in your full strength and so you got to think on, and this, uh, this can apply to any, many different areas. It doesn't have to just be between a husband and a wife or a mother and a son or a son or a mother and a daughter, mother and a child or a son and a uh, father and their child. It can be in many different situations, like a work situation. You tell somebody to do something and then when they start doing it, you don't like exactly how they approach it, but they go a different route, but you always end up, you, you both come to the same conclusion. And so you want them to just take your route and your route only. Well, you know, when it comes to free will and thinking, people have their own thoughts and they may arrive at the same thing, but they may get go through a different forest or a different way to get there. And so your way is not always the best way. Sometimes people do it so that they can get understanding and you got to let them do it. And so for you, in order to get peace, what you want to start doing is thinking on things in your life that you have done well. Things that have made other people happy. Because when you can bring joy into the life of others, that is a sign of strength and a skill. And so you want to make that skill knock open the doors of opportunity. It'll be doors of opportunity for you as well as others. And so money is a key to not just buy things, but to put you around other people. You may even find someone that actually loves you because of you or loves your product. And you may be the beauty in their eyes. Amen. The beauty that they were searching for for all that time. I hope I didn't say that incorrectly. So what I'm saying is, let's say, for example, we'll bring it back to love because yesterday was Valentine's Day. We'll bring it back to love. All right. And so let's say, for example, this dude or this female. We'll go with a dude because I'm a female and I don't do chicks. All right. Look, the, the women. Don't come up to me and tell me you love me. Because I'll be like, what kind of love? What you talking about? Because I don't know you. And so, yeah, you got to be careful with me. Because I'll be like, horror Babylon. And so anyway. So, yeah. <laughs> and so, uh, when, when, when the guy chooses somebody else that is not you. You got to start pumping yourself up, kind of like David did. Yeah, you know, I'm 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 blessed. I'm loved. God loves me 100. And um because the problem may be that God has someone in mind for you 
and that instead of being reviled by the person that you're with, he's going to find or bring the one to you that when he looks upon you, you are the beauty in his eyes that he was searching for. Because God will put something in the eye of a man and things will not line up, meaning he won't have bad vision, none. but things won't line up in his heart until that that image in his eye connects to what he's supposed to connect to. And that would be you. So he's supposed to connect to you. And so, you know, the other guy that didn't turn out right, you know, that's, that's God just, you know, saving you from a lot of pain and a lot of hurt. At least that's the way I like to look at it. God will save you from a lot of pain and a lot of hurt. Uh, first Peter two twenty four says, who his own self bear our sins in his own body on the tree that we being dead to sin should live unto righteousness by whose stripes ye were healed. Okay. So by whose stripes ye were healed. I'm going to read that again. First Peter 2 24. Who his own self bear our sins in his own body on the tree that we being dead to sins should live unto righteousness by whose stripes ye were healed. By whose stripes ye were healed. Mm. Who his own self bear our sins in his own body on the tree that we being dead to sins should live unto righteousness by whose stripes ye were healed. Some of y'all are screaming like, ah, you mean I can't sin no more? Let's see. Who his own self bear our sins in his own body on the tree that we being dead to sins should live unto righteousness by whose stripes ye were healed. You were healed. Some of y'all, I prayed for y'all this weekend, and some of y'all got healed instantly. Yeah, yes. I like it when it happens like that. (laughs) Did you know that you could pray for yourself and be healed? You don't have to walk around sick, broke. Pray for yourself. Pray for yourself. Pray for yourself. That's what you do. Um, President Biden has um, made a promise to um, give people vaccines up to 100,000 people in the first 100 days. He's almost making it. He's getting close. I think he'll make it. And then uh, he wants to do like at least 250,000, I think. Or is it 250 million? I think it's 250,000. Somewhere around there. Anyway, so he's trying to uh, vaccinate some people because some people just don't get sick. They don't get the flu. They don't get nothing, which is a blessing. And, and then other people are like the faithful people. We we take what we take is the word of God as our medicine. So we don't we don't receive it. And then there's some people that, you know, they may receive that spirit of sickness, but you can cast that sucker off. That don't make them any weaker than you. They didn't. They probably didn't know to say the word of God. And so when they don't know that you responsible to tell them, you got to tell them about the word and how they can be healthy by the word. And so some of y'all got healed this weekend. Praise the Lord. I'm so happy about it. Now you can let me know, post it up in the chat and whatnot. Um, and so what you do is first you got to have faith and you can build that up. Go to, uh, the book of Mark. I ain't even pulling this up, but I'm going to, I'm going to tell you where to go. But it's a book of Mark, uh, chapter 11, and go uh, read verses uh, 22 through 25. I ain't going to read it, but it just means to believe. Believe God. When you pray, believe before you pray that you have that thing. You're like, what do you mean believe before I pray? What that means is before you utter a word, you got to actually have the thought. Remember, Jehovah God, the Father thought it. Jesus, Jesus loved it, and the Holy Spirit did it. The same thing in heaven ha- occurs in the earth. You think of a thing. You pray. You use the word of God to pray that thing. That would be Jesus. Jesus is the word. And the Holy Spirit will cause the word of God to manifest in your life. So 
If you, whatever you dealing with, whatever sickness or problems or issues or whatever is going on in your physical body or in your mind, whatever the name of that is, you rebuke that sickness. You can have it specifically, or if you just got a bunch of issues, just rebuke sickness. Because those things are, those are spiritual attachments. And then you say, Father God, in the name of Jesus, I receive my healing. Before you say that, you, what you do is you, you say, in the name of Jesus, I rebuke sickness. And if it has a name, give it a name. It could be the C word. It could be something. Any, anyway, and so whatever it is, it could be high blood pressure, whatever. You rebuke that thing. Devil, get off. You rebuke that thing. And then you say, and do not return to me. And then you say, Lord God, I receive my healing today, right now. I receive my healing in the name of Jesus. Hold those hands up, amen, and just begin to receive. So I rebuke sickness in my body, in in my whole body, in the name of Jesus. And I receive your healing, Father, in my whole body, in the name of Jesus. You begin to feel the presence of the Lord. Amen. Now, for some of y'all, just because you don't feel the presence, don't get di- don't get distraught, because the word of God is on the inside of you. So don't trip. All right. Um. So there you go. And then we have Romans eight and eleven. Eight and eleven says, "But if the spirit of him that raised up Jesus from the dead dwell in you, he that raised up Christ from the dead shall also quicken your mortal bodies by the spirit that dwelleth in you." What? But if the spirit of him that raised up Jesus from the dead dwell in you, he that raised up Christ from the dead shall also quicken your mortal bodies by his spirit that dwelleth in you. Hmm. But if the spirit of him that raised up Jesus from the dead dwell in you, he that raised up Christ from the dead shall also quicken your mortal bodies by his spirit that dwelleth in you. Hmm. You know what I was thinking? Jesus is alive on the inside of you. The word is alive and it and it manifests. And I'm also thinking that you cannot lie and be in God. You're like, what? You cannot lie and be in God. Meaning, you can't say, thus say of the Lord. And if the Lord did not say, thus say it. If he didn't say, look, go say this. Go tell, don't go, go tell my people this. Go prophesy to them. He killed 450 prophets in the book of King, uh, 1 Kings uh, 18. He killed 450 prophets of Baal. He had, okay. So, it was a bunch of prophets back then. So it was about 400 of gods and 450 of Baals. And so Baal was a false god. And so Elijah came along and God told him, go go over there and tell them this. Go bring everybody together. Like, you know, go bring everybody, tell everybody to come to the park. You, you know, you ever been through one of these things where the community comes in and, and the head of the community said, yo, bring everybody to the park, everybody to the park. Bring everybody to the center of the street. I got to say something. I want you to hear it. All right. Go get everybody. Tell everybody, come on, come on, come on. Come on. Shoot. Got something to talk about. And so, go and get all the people, all, gather all the prophets, everybody, everybody, everybody. Because the enemy was killing God's, God's prophets. He was killing them. And so, uh, he bring them all down. You know, he tells like, look, go ahead and put some meat on the altar. Wet it down three times. And I'm going to set it on fire. And tell them that who's ever God can cook this meat that is the lord and so both sides what they meet he says it's 450 y'all and it's like one of me look uh y'all gonna get one i'm gonna get two bulls or whatever two of us two slabs of meat or whatever i'm summarizing right and so they like cool you get two I, we get one okay cool we only gotta light up one you gotta light up two <laughs> uh, that's all on you <laughs> and so <laughs> he went and put like 12 stones to represent all the tribes and whatnot. 
<laughs> and uh, he, he he did all that, right? And so then he uh, God set this sucker on fire. He set it on fire. That meat burned to like a a nice crispy. He burned up. He I mean it took all the because he he put water on the meat three times and he put troughs around it when filled it with water and water was trickling down everywhere and he God took up all the water and cooked that meat like barbecue like mmm tasty and the people of Baal they couldn't get there started they like. <clears throat> you know you trying to start a car. <clears throat> they couldn't even get a beat going. <clears throat> couldn't I mean they couldn't even light a match, yo. And so God like Look. all the people fell down, they was like, Oh, Jehovah is gone. He let the fire, Jehovah is gone. I'm summarizing. You go read it yourself in First Kings 18. I say all that to say is that false gods are not good for you. They're not good for you. Moon over over to verse nine to uh, chapter 19 in First Kings. Go down to the, uh, verse number three. It says, "And when he saw that, he arose and went to went for his life and came to Beersheba." which belonged to Judah and left his servant there. But he himself went a day's journey into the wilderness and came and sat down under the juniper tree. And he requested for himself that he might die and said, it is not enough. It is, it is enough now. O Lord, take away my life for I am not better than my father's. He was tired. Y'all he was tired. And as he lay and slept under a juniper tree, behold, then an angel touched him and said unto him, arise and eat. And so God fed him a couple days because he had a 40 day journey. Did you know that God can make uh, three days worth of food last for 40 days? Well, he did it here. And then he ended up uh, going over in verse 18. It says, yet uh, have I left 7,000 in Israel all the knees which have not bowed unto Baal and every mouth which uh, have not kissed him. And so every, everyone that in verse in chapter 18, everyone that us worship Baal died. They, they, they gone y'all. And so that's a symbol of telling you that when Jesus come, those that don't worship him will be squashed like grapes. Those are the grapes in uh, the book of Revelations. They, that God calls it wine. Grapes being crushed. That's, those are people that don't that worship the devil. And so I ain't telling you go kill nobody. God don't need you for that. Don't don't go around starting hurting people. And you Satanists, don't go around start hurting people. You're gonna be um, I'm you gonna end up going to jail. Don't do that. You're going to go to jail. Um, Just ask Jesus. Yo, Jesus, you for real? You for real, Jesus? Come on now. What? And so anyway. <laughs> and so anyway, um, the the people. What what the reason why I was reading this part is um, when you see people die. And they die by the multitudes. It'll shake you up. It'll just shake you up. Even if you, whether you got a hand in it or not, you're a changed person. When you see a bunch of people that don't worship God and they see the truth and they still don't worship. It just takes you back. Because the ones when they when they saw the this meat flame up and all the water was gone out. They was like, oh, those are God's. Those are God's people. But the ones that were not God's people, they were still insolent going, I'm not impressed. I'm not impressed. And do it again. You ever seen people like that? Do it again. I ain't impressed. Whatever. So that was a good trick. That was a good trick. Whatever. Whatever. God's okay. 
You ain't got to believe. Tell you what, I'm going to send you to your father. And then you can talk to him about it. And what happens then? You get sent that, that those people got sent to hell and Satan is down there. Oh man, you are stupid. Oh man. I thought that was just like a, a passing thing of your youth, but whoa, you saw evidence of Jehovah and you didn't believe. Oh, snap. (laughs) Bam! Starts cutting them, scratching them, hitting them, punching them. Just starts chewing their flesh. <laughs> Bet you wish you had a believe now. All kinds of crazy. When God shows you who he is, believe him. When the enemy, when God shows you who the enemy is, believe him. Because you have Satan and then you have workers of iniquity. Those are Satan's uh, disciples. I mean, you can pray for them if you want to. I will go with the with the utterance of with the umption of God. You can pray for people. But you know what? Don't worship what they worship. There's a famous guy that goes around that's going around now saying that, oh, well, there's many ways to God and. You can uh, you can worship Jesus and worship other people. No, you can't. Don't be like the worshipers of Baal. You're going to go to hell. Hell fire. Hell. God don't share. Just like you don't like sharing your man. You don't like sharing your woman. God don't like sharing his altar. He don't like sharing his throne. He don't like sharing his position in your heart with anybody other than Jesus who paid the price for your sins. If Jesus had not paid the price on the cross for your sins and shed his blood, he would not be sharing your heart with Jehovah. He would not. God would be like, "Uh uh-uh, what you do lately? Nope. Which is why he says that we are to worship the Lord our God with all our heart, mind, soul, and strength. Love our brothers and sisters in Christ as Jesus loves the church. Love our neighbors as we love ourselves. God, God don't want to share his position. We're giving you, I'm giving you these foundation scriptures so you'll know who he is and who you are in him. God pulled you aside for such a time as this. This lady came on, uh, she was on us uh, on my social media feed and she says, yo, I want you to tell my husband some things uh, that, you know, that he does well so that when he look back on this, he can see, you know, the encouragement. And so I'm like, I right, box head. <laughs> You're like, Kathy, that is not encouraging. Hold on. See, box head is such a person that he is a doctor. He is a comforter. He is a husband. He is a father. He is loving. He is kind and he is just. He is patient. He is long suffering. The dude is a pastor, but he's a pastor on a, on a different level because he does not cheat on his wife. He does not cheat on God. He does not cheat in his ties. I ain't going to say that he was always perfect in his whole life, but when he messed up, he learned from every mess up so that going forward, he would not mess up. And so I may have called him boxhead, but not boxhead as an insult. I called him boxhead because a, a box in God does not have a bottom. A box in God continues to grow because you, when you have a treasure chest in God, the treasure chest in God does not have a bottom. You continue to grow and as you grow, you get more tools and more instruments for the glory of God. See, in, 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 uh, And first in uh, the book of Kings verses 18 and 19, God wasn't just getting rid of the, the, the squalor and the, and the dung in the community. He was breaking the, the mountains in which these people were praying on. He split a mountain. And if God can split a mountain, so can you. And so I called him boxhead because he could split a mountain just like God. He could split a mountain of hell. How do I know? Because he's done it. You're like, what? He's done it. 
These kids would come into him and they would be messed up and broken. Some of them would backslide and he'd be like, yo, you got to come on over. Hold on. You got to get over that fence. He began to chop down the sin and the hell in these kids lives. He was chopping down the sin and the hell. You ever you ever get a piece of ice and you trying to chisel ice and you and you just trying to get a good getting it get that pick anchored in there real good. Cuz once you get it in there good, the rest of it's going to fall. This man goes forth and starts preaching the word of God to these kids and he does it in love. He ain't yelling at them. He ain't shouting at them. He's just talking to them normal. And to the boys, he treat them like men. And to the girls, he treat them like young ladies that that will be women of industry. And he starts chipping away at them. How do I know? Because he chipped away at his wife. His wife was hurting. And she was in pain because she didn't look like the people that she was around. And she wanted to look like and sound like the people she was around. around. He's like, look, I didn't marry you to be like them. I married you because you were a diamond and a rough in your own community. And I brought you here so that you could shine. And he began to pick away at his wife and at those children that were coming for help. And before you know it, he had formed a vessel of God. By speaking the word of God. So I called him Boxhead. Because he is a treasure chest of God. And God has put many things in him. To raise up young men and young women. That will take up the cross. And lead off from where he stops. And they will go further. They will do the John 14 and 12. Because he's doing the John 14 and 12. Because he's teaching them how to do it. A John 14 and 12 is not so you can look at the thorn in other people's eyes. But it's so that you can take the thorns out of your eyes. So that you can open up your mouth with boldness. And know that what comes out of your mouth will be the gloriousness of God. Will be the gospel of Jesus Christ. That will chip away. And all the muck and the dung and the hardened life sins of life of man and he brought these people unto salvation and he built them up that now his wife was already educated but now she has a divinity degree these children came in broken but now they shine like diamonds and they go out and they tell people about the love of Jesus Christ He's creating instruments so they can refer back to. So they can say, look, okay, this is what I do in that situation. Okay, I don't have a father, but I got this word. I got a heavenly father. If you don't know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, now is the time. Now is the time to say yes to God. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Glory to God. If you don't know Jesus, repeat this prayer after me. Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, I repent of my sins. Hallelujah. I ask you, Lord Jesus, to forgive me of all my sins. I confess my sins before you this day. I give up my past life with Satan and close every door to all Satan's devices. I confess Jesus as the Lord of my life. Thank you for saving me and for bringing me back to where I once was from this day forward, Lord Jesus. I will be sensitive to how you feel. I won't hurt you. I will obey you, Lord Jesus. I ask you to present me to Jehovah in your name. Lord Jesus, I believe with my heart. I confess with my mouth that you rose from the dead, that I am saved and receive you today wholeheartedly 100%. Make me a light in this earth and a salt that gives it flavor. And from this day forward, I will live for you, Lord Jehovah, God, in the name of Jesus. And share the gospel of Christ Jesus with everyone I meet 
and everyone I know is commitment, Jesus. I will get this word for you. I pray this prayer to the Father in the name of Jesus. I receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit in the name of Jesus with evidence of speaking in tongues and interpreting tongues for the edifying of the body of Christ Jesus by the will of Jehovah God. Amen. Congratulations. You got saved on LUTJRadio.com, WKKP, Digital Broadcasting, Take the 10-Week Class. Amen. And Jesus loves you, beloved, and so do I. My name is Kathy Brox, LUTJRadio.com. Glory to God. Amen. Bye. (laughs) Ha, ha, ha.